Hey, Game Makers! Welcome to Echo's Beginner's Guide to Event Commands. When using RPG Maker, events are basically... well, the entire game. We'll be going over event commands and ways to use them. If you're like a Super RPG Maker veteran, you've probably got most of these down already. But I get so many questions where the answer is literally just, there's an event command for that, this is where you find it. So I'd figure I'd help go over these and where to find everything. When you create a new event, you've got name and note up top. I'd advise naming anything important to something you can easily find. Because once you've got a ton of events on a map, it gets really hard to zoom through them and find the one you're looking for. Note is the event's note tags. If you're using any plugins related to events, you'll probably end up typing them in here. Conditions. I've gone over most of these in one video or another, but simply, Conditions are the condition in which this specific page of the event shows up. So, if this switch is on, this event will appear in-game. Same with variables and cell switches. Video more on them over here, but I'll go over them more shortly. Item refers to if the player has a certain item. So, if you've got a potion, this event will show up sort of thing. Similarly, if this specific actor, or player character, is in the party, this event will show. You can select as many of these as you require. If nothing is sent, that page will show normally. Next, we can set an image, or character graphic, or whatever you want to use the event for. You don't have to, though. Now their movement. You can set the type. Fixed, random, approach, and custom. These should be pretty obvious, but fixed makes them stay still, random moves them randomly, approach approaches the player, and custom allows you to make your own custom move ramp. This will bring up the movement route window. Commands listed in here will only affect this event. I'll go over this more shortly, but you can select where you want them to move here in a more specified manner. You can make them jump, turn, and a bunch of other things. You can also change their speed, image, opacity, transparency, and blend mode here. Now back to our main event editor window. We can also set their default speed and frequency here. Under options, we've got walking, stepping, directional fix, and through. Checking these off will turn on the event's walking animation, stepping animation, which is confusing in my opinion, which refers to having the character play their walking slash stepping animation while they're standing still. Directional fix prevents the event from changing directions, so if the player talks to them from the left, they'll continue facing the direction they're currently facing. Checking through means they can walk through impassable tiles and other events, and the player can walk through them. Priority has below characters, same as characters, and above characters. Surprise, surprise! This makes them appear either below, the same level as, or above other events. The player will be able to walk through them when they're set as either below or above them. Trigger refers to how the event is activated. Action button is go up and click enter to talk to them. Player touch is when the player walks into them. Event touch is when events touch you! And auto run and parallel are a bit more interesting. Auto run runs events automatically, preventing the player from doing anything, like moving or opening the menu. These are used primarily for things like cutscene control. You can only run one of these at a time. Parallel is different. These are not used for cutscenes ever. Don't use these for cutscenes! Parallel is used for things you want to happen in the background of whatever you're doing. Like an event to turn things on when you enter a map, or an event to constantly be checking your player's location, or to check whether the player has killed everything in the area, or changing and managing lots of screen effects. Additionally, you can run as many of these as you need, and they'll continue to process no matter what you're doing. One last thing before we look at actual event commands. At the top, we've got new event page, which creates a new event page, copy event page, which copies the event page, paste event page, you see where I'm going with this, right? These are nice and make making multiple page events easy, but keep in mind, Without tweaking anything, the max amount of event pages you can have in a single event is only 20 now. Okay, event commands! Double click the blank space in contents and here we are. In MV specifically, we've got three pages to play with. All nicely labeled and everything. First, message. This stuff deals with messages and showing text. So let's check out show text. This is where you write stuff in the text window. Woo! You can select a face graphic by clicking the obvious face graphic box where it says face. You type in the blank space. Additionally, if you hover your mouse for a while, it'll bring up a list of extra text codes you can use, like color, showing variables, and other fun stuffs. We can also change the text box background to the normal window, 
dim, which shows a dark box instead, or transparent to make it invisible. You can also set the position to the bottom of the screen, middle, or top of the screen. Preview or hitting F2 will show you how it should appear in game. Now, note that this preview isn't entirely accurate if you're using weird codes from plugins or using plugins to adjust your message window, but default stuff should show correctly. We've also got this nice little line here that tells us ballpark where the text is going to get cut off. Again, the more you mess with plugins, the less accurate this becomes, but default should be a good guesstimate. Last show text note. Normally, if you reach four lines of text, the window will save and close, but if you click on batch entry, down here, it will allow you to keep typing and auto cut up your text boxes. Next, show choices. Wanna guess what this does? So you enter the choices to give your player. Again, you can set the window background and position. Default allows you to select the choice you start on, and cancel lets you choose which choice gets activated if the player hits the cancel button. When using these, you just set what happens if the player chooses them inside their little branches. Any other event commands will execute after the stuff inside the choices is finished. Next, we've got input number. This will simply bring up a number enter screen with however many digits you select, and the player can enter it. The number they enter will be saved to whichever variable you have selected. I've got a few different videos showing ways to use these, but an easy one is giving the player a number code to input, and then using a conditional branch to check if that variable equals the number you need. But we'll get back to that in a bit. Select item. This is for when your friend is like dying of desert fever or something and you need to throw a sand pearl at them, or something to that effect. This will bring up an item select menu of whatever type you set. The player can then choose an item. That item's ID will be stored in the variable you set. Then simply use a conditional branch to check if the item ID number is the correct one and go from there. Now, show scrolling text. It shows scrolling text. Moving on to the important stuff. New category, game progression. I've already covered switches, variables, and self switches in their own video. As a recap, switches are generally used to turn things on and off. You turn them on and off for the game's plot, items, graphics, scenes, scenarios, game progression, what have you, and set everything relevant up to conditional branches or pages of if switch X is on, do this instead. Variables are a bit more diverse. These can be used for anything. <laughs> We've mentioned setting ID numbers to variables, like for input number or item select things. You can also increase or decrease them to say, keep track of your game's progression. So every time it's increased, you'll set an event's conditions to its new number and update them accordingly. So say, NPCs get new text, new areas open up, and so on. You can also use them for math. Random number generating. Setting an item, weapon, armor, number amount. Got 10 potions? Good to know! You can set them to your actor parameters, or monster parameters, characters' map details, actor IDs, and lots of other random stuff. Variables, in addition to conditional branches, are what make your game. They'll basically control it, they'll do like everything in it. Here are some videos in which I use variables in several different ways. Self switches, again, get explained in that switches video, but they are switches that only apply to the event they are used on. Control timer, for when you want to put your player on a time limit. Just set the amount of time. Moving on, conditional branches. You basically use conditional branches for if this condition is met, do this, else, do that, types of things. For example, the timer. Creating a parallel event and having a conditional branch say, if the timer is at zero minutes or less, stop the timer and tell the player it hit zero. So let's go through this a bit, shall we? The symbol ones are, if switch X is on or off, do this or that. Similarly, we've got variables. Again, enter the variable you're reacting to, and set it to the number you're looking for. So, set a variable to the amount of potions you have, and does the player have 10 or more potions? Basically, is this number the number you're looking for? If yes, do the thing. Otherwise, don't. Self switches follow the same rules as normal switches. Again, they just only apply to the current event. Page two, our if actor is something page. So if say, a peer's class was different because class changing, or had a certain skill, or weapon equipped. If that specific condition is met, do something. You can also check off create else branch at the bottom to do something specific if the condition is not met. Page three, the stuff page. Enemy refers to the monsters in battle. 
Simply enough, if the enemy has appeared in the battle, or has a specified state. Character is just if someone is facing a specific way, do a thing. So the player turns down, turning his back on someone, and suddenly it's a back attack! Or something. Vehicle X is driven! Are you in an airship? If you are, maybe you should change the lighting or something. Not anymore? Well, let's put the lighting back to normal. That kind of thing. Basically, if you're in the vehicle, do a thing. Gold amounts for things like inns. Items for things like items. You've got this, right? If the X is in the inventory, do a thing. Button X is pressed! So say, if L was pressed, it switches you to a different party, or other such things. Something happens if this button is pressed. Keep in mind, you can't use these as default event triggers. You couldn't have pressed shift to talk to someone by default. Though there are plugins for that. You might also want to note that left, right, up, and down don't trigger when you're using the touch input. Script is for any script commands, usually for a plugin. If the plugin requires you to use a script command, it'll likely tell you so in the help file. Loops! Loops are fun. Loops are great for but thou must situations. Essentially, you create a loop. Everything inside the loop will repeat until you break the loop with break loop. So, if you say, give the player a yes no choice, you can make it so the exchange will continue and continue and continue until the player chooses the correct answer. Then you can use break loop to continue with your life. Exit event processing. I'll be honest, I've rarely used this. It's essentially used to escape an event without changing, erasing it, or continuing with the rest of the event. For example, somewhere in your event, you've got a yes, no choice. If the player chooses the wrong answer, you want to stop the event there and let them try again. You'd use exit event processing. It does not erase the event, nor does it go to a new page. It just stops until you talk to it again. This will not work in parallel or auto run events, as they'll just keep repeating. Common events are your friends. These will call a pre-made event you can set up in the database. So say, changing all of your characters' graphics easily, or something like setting player location variables. It beats re-entering them every single time. Additionally, these can be set up with a switch in the database. So when the switch turns on, they'll automatically activate, which is awesome. Labels. These are kind of like loops, but not really. You can use them to label and jump back to that specific point. So say, set a start label, you can enter these names to whatever you want, and then somewhere later in the event, give the player a choice to jump back to the beginning of the event or something. It's great for trying to event a mini options menu. These are also nice for testing, or at least used to be. If your scene doesn't have too much going on, you can just jump to the label where you need to start testing from, and delete it when you're finished. Though now you can just right click on a selection of event commands, and test them instead. Labels are sometimes also used for certain plugins as kind of like their own conditional branches. Comment! This does nothing. Not joking, this does nothing. Well, sometimes plugins will, or at least used to, require you to add in comments to enable certain effects on things. But by default, it's basically here to make little notes about things. They're also nice for keeping things organized and easier to look through. They have no effect in-game whatsoever. Moving on to party stuff! Yay! We've got change gold, change items, change weapons, change armor, and change party member. Four out of the five of these work in the exact same way. We've got increase slash decrease, and the constant amount we're inputting. We could also base the amount on a variable. An item, weapon, and armor, we just need to select the specified whatever it is. Weapon and armor have a checkbox at the bottom to include the stuff already equipped it on the party when decreasing things. Change party member simply lets you add or remove party members. You can check initialize at the bottom to make it so when the character is added, they'll have all of their base everything again. Their default armor, equipment, level, etc. Actor stuffs! Change HP, MP, and TP all work the same. You can select the entire party or a specified actor, or a specified actor based on a variable. Rest is the same as the other commands we just looked at. You can also check Allow Knock-In at the bottom to allow them to die if we decrease all of their HP. <laughs> Again, MP and TP are the exact same, save the KO checkbox. Since, you know, we can't KO with MP or TP. Change state! Again, just select the actor and add or remove the specified state. Recover all! Heals either the entire party, specified character, or variable specified character. Back to our nice familiar window, change XP works the same as HP, MP, and TP, with an added checkbox for show level up, which will display a level up message if the actor levels up. 
Change perimeters. You've got this by now, right? Skills! Select actor! Select skill! Learn or remove! Change equipment. Changes their equipment. Select the actor, the type of equipment, and the specified equipment you want to change it to. Change name. Type in the new name. Change class. Do I really need to explain these? Nickname! And change profile lets you... Wow! Change the profile text! Much amaze! That's all for this soberly long episode, but we'll be continuing our journey through event commands later! Don't worry, the other pages have somewhat -ish more interesting stuff on them. Anyway, I hope this helped, and I'll see you next time, gamers! Bye.